Welcome to episode 81 of New Hampshire Knits, a knitting podcast coming to you from the gorgeous state of New Hampshire, where state motto is knit free or die. Today is Friday, June 22nd, and I'm your host, Corrine Clare. This episode is sponsored by The Woolly Thistle. The Woolly Thistle brings you the best of British and European yarns to us here in the United States and Canada. The Woolly Thistle has all your British and Scandinavian yarn needs, including blacker yarns. Look at Lioness 5050 Wool Linen Blend. It's perfect for summer knitting. Or Tuku Wool for your lot dress in line five. And Plumpy John Arbin Knit by Numbers DK in all the colours. Don't forget your summer reading with Kate Davies's West Highland Way, Knit Sonic's Colourwork Playbook and Breeze by Making Stories and so many more. Hoping that Kate Davies's new book Handy Woman will be with us soon so keep a lookout for that landing in the shop. Let the woolly thistle do the international shipping so you don't have to. Thank you new listeners and returning listeners for checking out what's happening here at New Hampshire Knits. It's always good to have you join me so that I'm not exactly just talking to myself. So that's lovely. Thanks for coming and I hope you enjoy the show. So what have I been up to? Mm, Oh yes, a little thing called Squam. I went to the Squam Spring Retreat. I signed up for this sort of kind of last minute-ish because I was really undecided whether I wanted to go or not. I had a lot of preconceived notions about what this retreat would be like. And I thought, well, I'll go because it'll be good for business. I'll get to meet people and just I'll vend as well and all that. So I I wasn't really sure what to make of it until I got there. And once I arrived there, I just fell in love. The people that I was sharing a cabin with were excellent and I really, really enjoyed their company. We had about seven or nine of us, depending, uh, staying in a lovely big cabin right on the lakefront. We had our own dock and I think all the cabins have their own dock. So when you got up in the morning after sleeping with the windows open and hearing the loons, uh, you come down the stairs and there's a big, big window facing the lake and you literally are in heaven. (laughs) It was such a lovely way to start the day. So the cabin was excellent, although we did have a little fun and games one night when uh, the squirrels and chipmunks decided to play havoc with us because we'd moved into their space because the cabin had been closed all winter and we were the first people to stay in it. So it had been opened up for the retreat, but um, the squirrels and and chipmunks, let's say, were not too happy, but that's okay because we ended up smoking them out by lighting a fire that did not go well. Ah, <laughs> oh, good times. All's well that ends well, though. But uh, yeah, the, so the people attending were absolutely brilliant, and the event organizers, especially, of course, Meg Fusel, who is just lovely, lovely, and she did a great job. I think the event went off without a hitch. I certainly felt very happy with every aspect of it. The teachers were magnificent. You had so many great teachers and I'll talk about the classes I took. I talked about the venue. Uh, The lake is beautiful and where the retreat is held is sort of off on a finger of the lake. So it doesn't feel like this huge expanse of water. You're looking out at the lake, but then you see land. And of course, it's undeveloped land across the way. So I always like that when you're looking out at water and you see more land as well. I like that. So yeah, and the food was amazing. I think that's the thing that took me by surprise the most. You eat all your meals in the dining room together. So 
it's a huge dining room with lots and lots of tables and chairs and we filled that place up but they had so much variety and so much food it was like being on a cruise or I imagine it would be like being on a cruise where there was just everything you could want to eat and of course we had permission to eat ice cream first or three times a day it didn't matter there was waffles and pancakes and sausages I love the sausage links for breakfast I don't get sausage links very much here in the States. So, oh my God, those were good. You could make your own sandwiches at lunchtime or have a hot meal or they'd have specialty sandwiches that they'd make for you. They were doing stir fries. Oh my God, the food was amazing. And it was three meals a day and they'd ring the bell from the dining room when we could go and eat. So you hear the bell and you stop what you're doing, you run off. (laughs) And there was always enough. It didn't matter if you were last in line, there was enough food. They kept it coming. (sighs) And not having to cook. That was something I noticed when I first walked into the cabin. That the kitchen was tiny. It was basically a sink and no fridge, but an ice box because they um, harvest the ice off the lake during the winter and keep it in an ice shed all year. And then they come round and they put these gigantic chunks of ice into an ice box. And underneath you can uh, store your items that need to stay cold. But that was the extent of the kitchen. And I remember thinking, well, how do we add? didn't know how are we going to um you know cook (laughs) turns out you don't need to and that's probably one of the best things ever about going on a retreat is not having to think about what's for dinner and what you're cooking so yes I was far and away blown away by the food and I didn't even overindulge really I don't think not that I was trying to be good I just there was enough so I felt like I didn't have to squirrel it all away (laughs) and there was always cookies and muffins and pastry oh god there was everything it was so good and of course the classes I took two classes and they're all day classes the retreat starts on Wednesday afternoon and finishes on Sunday morning and it actually is a good length of time you really are relaxing by Saturday and uh, Saturday's a free day and that's a nice thing because all I wanted to do that day was sit on the dock and knit and that's what I did and you know had visitors from other cabins and my own cabin mates would come and go and sit on the dock and oh it was just lovely and there were some classes going on on Saturday too that you could do if you wanted to or you could do nothing or you could take off and go check out town or um, some people went hiking rattle snake mountain I think it's called but I just wanted to sit by the water and listen to it lapping and hear the wildlife around oh I'm definitely going again. I haven't told my husband, but yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going again. They run the retreats twice a year, spring and fall. And I think the spring one just it's great after a very long winter and a very busy winter too. This was really like a little vacation. So I've gone on enough, haven't I? It was fabulous. It was fantastic. And I really, really enjoyed it. So let's get started, shall we? This episode includes Off the Needles, On the Needles, and a Woolly Thistle update, and a quick moment of hen at the end. So let's get started. Off the Needles, hooray! Finally, I have an Off the Needles, and it's the Tidal Autumn Tea by Tidal Yarns. This sweater I've talked about in many episodes. It's an easy little layering sweater with a soft square neckline, raglan shaping, and a little split hem with three quarter length sleeves it's knitted in fingering weight and it's all stocking knit in the round and it became my car knitting I can't remember at what point it became my car knitting but I know I knit both sleeves uh, while waiting for kids and things like that whenever I had time that I was waiting that's what I would knit it was finished and blocked and then the weather obliged with some very cool weather so I got to wear it right away for a couple of days and I loved it with a long shirt underneath and then this little sweater on top oh that reminds me I posted a picture of myself on Instagram wearing it and it was a very serious picture and when my kids and my husband saw it they both well they all burst out laughing (laughs) yeah I was trying to be you know atmospheric and moody (laughs) ah funny but anyway it's a lovely sweater and I love wearing it and I think I now have three that I've knitted from Patricia's yarn so Tidal Yarns is Patricia's company and she has for a long time been sourcing wool locally and then she makes her own blend and has it spun I think I'm correct in saying at Green Mountain Spinnery in Vermont Patricia's down in Connecticut 
And then she dyes the yarn with her natural dyes. And she really only sells her yarn at fibre festivals. So she is at Rhinebeck. Last year was her first year at Rhinebeck. And I hope that she'll be back there. But, you know, she goes to New Hampshire Sheep and Wool and all the ones down in Mass in Connecticut. So her stall is always very beautiful to your eye as well as your hands because you can get in there and feel that yarn it's such a lovely booth always so I'm three sweaters in and I love them all but this might be my most favorite and when I was at Squam and I was vending I actually saw a lady wearing yet another of Patricia's sweaters and I said is that a title yeah and she says yep and I'm like okay I think I need to knit that one next and I think if I remember, it was a heavier weight, so maybe a worsted weight or DK weight sweater. And it has these lovely little pockets with the lining that's a contrasting color. So I think that's going to be my next Tidal Yarns purchase. And that will probably be at Rhinebeck. So I'll start saving my pennies for that. I love her yarn and I love her patterns. I don't think her patterns are available on Ravelry. I had a couple of people ask about that. As far as I know, when you buy her yarn, then you can select your pattern. Yeah, so yay! I'm so excited. I would like to knit that sweater again, the autumn, the title autumn sweater. I happen to have some yarn that I have good access to. And I think that that little pattern would knit up in lots of different fingering weights just beautifully. So on the needles, I put my Silver Forest yoke back on the needles after Squam. I'd taken it to the art fair that I was vending at on Waste Yarn, just so I could show it off. And that thing got a lot of love. It really is quite strikingly beautiful. The design, as well as the uh, almost monochromatic color, high contrast color work, because it's all in creams and grays. And it's lovely. It's so lovely. And I am so, so glad that I didn't give up on this sweater. As you might remember, I knitted it using the needle sizes. Of course, I'm not using the same yarn, but it is a fingering weight yarn that I'm using. It's Jameson and Smith Shetland Supreme, which is a lovely, lovely yarn. Really woolly, really squishy really honest yarn. So it's a different yarn from the pattern, but I use the same needles as Jennifer Steingas recommends. But of course I didn't get gauge, but I knit the whole yoke before discovering that really it was too big for my husband. <laughs> but I didn't give up because I, I'm the twice knitter. Tw knit things twice at least is my motto. And uh, yeah, so I went down a needle size and I went down a pattern size as well. And I knitted again. And as I explained before, this is the same mistake I made with the Lovage. So anyway, I went with that rule of thumb of, okay, let's go down a needle size and down a pattern size and hopefully that'll work out. So I knitted the whole yoke again and blocked it and it fits and it fits well. I'm really chuffed, really chuffed. So that had its debut at Squam. And then after we got home from Squam, I put it back on the needles and I split for the body, putting the arm stitches on waist yarn. And I am now probably halfway down the body. And actually last night, actually I'm recording this on Father's Day and you'll be listening to it the following Friday or after. And last night we took the kids out for a lovely burger at the Worthy Burger up in Randolph, Vermont. And then we went, no, it's, in, um, it's not in Randolph. The cinema that we went to is in Randolph. The Worthy Burger is in, is it Sharon, Vermont? I can't remember. It's where Vermont Law School is. Anyway, we went there. It was really nice. We sat outside and uh, the kids got to play that beer game where you throw the, the little sacks in to try and get them in the hole. So they were kept busy with that. We enjoyed a really good meal. And then we went up to the cinema. Why am I telling you this? Um, oh, yes, because I took my Silver Forest sweater. And whenever I've tried to knit at the theatre, it's disaster. I drop stitches and create new stitches that aren't meant to be there and basically just make a mess because it's so dark. This is a beautiful little antique of a theatre, um, quite small. And we went to see um, Incredibles 2. It was fun, but there was enough light, it seemed. And also, I think... Usually when I've tried to knit at the cinema, it's um, a sock and it's a small circumference and that 
maybe that has something to do with my lack of success. But anyway, I was knitting on the sweater and I managed to get about 20 rounds done during the movie, which was phenomenal. And I, I checked it this morning and there's there's really no mistakes that I can find and it looks fine. So, you know, it wasn't too tense a movie or anything. So there's no tension issues. It was fine. I wasn't scared at any point and all that. And my daughter did have to help me with yarn management. She kept the ball of yarn in her lap and whenever I tugged on it, she unrolled some for me because it was before that going off down under seats and things and we can't have that so yeah it was a fun night last night I got to knit and that was fun and uh, you know since I started the shop I really don't get as much knitting time in during the day as I used to so there's even I confess a day or two gone by where I haven't knitted I know but I do get to squish yarn all day long so I'm not going mad I'm not going crazy mental at not knitting every single day although I really do still I am a daily knitter please don't throw me out the club I am a daily knitter but there are times when I'm just too tired and I just go straight to bed after the kids have gone to bed or something and I'm just not getting the same knitting in as I used to so anyway all that to say I knitted at the cinema and it was a success so love that so yeah, so I'm knitting the A-line version. A lovely Jennifer Stangas, who is knit.love.wool on Instagram. You all know who she is. She's that designer that's doing all these really fantastic yokes. She provides three different body shapes that you can knit in that one pattern. You can go with the straight up and down, you can go with the hourglass waist shaping, or you can go with A-line. I'm going with A-line because I want this to be a comfy sweater that sits nicely on me and that I'm going to wear a lot. Yes, it'll be my new favorite sweater as soon as the weather turns cold enough. So my plan is to just zoom down the body and I think once I get to the sleeves, I'll uh, put that over into the car knitting and hopefully get that done in a good timely fashion. So let's see. Oh, other things that I've been knitting since we last talked. Well, at Squam, I took two knitting classes. The first was with Melody Hoffman, who is Bee Mandarines on Instagram. And you must know her. She's a lovely, lovely dear lady from France who lives in Latvia. And she actually was a guest on the podcast here quite a while ago, maybe back in the 30s or 40s number range in there. All the podcast episodes, by the way, you can stream from thewoollythistle.com if you are so inclined. So you can go down and look for that there. So I've known Melody for a long, long time and it was really fun to meet her in person and take a class with her. She's a very kind, generous, sweet teacher and I enjoyed her class. We were knitting one of her shawls and it was a lace work shawl. I would say that lace is my least, not my least favourite, because I do love the look of lace and I have knit a few things in lace. I can think of the Autumn Leaves cardigan by Never Not Knitting and there was another summer type cardigan that I knitted that was a lot of lace and I've done a few shawls that have some lace but lace is my least mastered technique shall we say and I always think of you know you've got cables, colour work and lace. And I know that there's a whole array of other stuff out there like brioche knitting that I haven't even looked at. Should I admit that in public? I don't know. But lace is sort of my most challenging personally, I would say. So I was really happy to take the lace class with Melody. And it's still a challenge. It is. I can manage most of the time to keep this, you know, if you put stitch markers along your row uh, so that each repeat by the time you come to the stitch marker at the end of that repeat you know whether or not you're off and you keep going and that way you check yourself throughout that's fine mostly I still would find myself with one too many or not enough stitches and I don't know how I do that but what really always gets me in trouble is the increasing on the sides of a shawl if you're knitting a shawl that is growing on either side you have to incorporate that lace pattern into those increasing stitches and I don't know what it is, but I cannot get my head around that. It's always difficult for me and I always end up having to rip back or fudge. It's just, you know, it's not a lot of fun. And I did find that with this class that I was getting that wrong a lot, but at least I had all day to figure that out. <laughs> and I do have the start of a beautiful shawl. And I actually knitted this in 
Rauma Strickland, which is their DK weight. I hadn't knitted with it before. Oh my goodness. What a delightful surprise. You know, I hear people telling me all the time, I love Rauma, I love Finnel Garn, I love Strick Garn. And I'm like, yeah, I know it's good. But I hadn't knitted with the Strick Garn before. And I really am quite taken with it. It resulted in a lovely, very sort of squishy, but well-defined stitch that had a lot of stretch and give in it. And it just, it had a really satisfying quality to knit with, but it also is really nice on the eye. It's really nice on the eye and I can see a sweater in that coming up too. Oh my goodness, yes. So I enjoyed knitting with that and I enjoyed Melody's class very much. And, and so I have plans to finish that particular shawl because I have the pattern for it. And I can't remember the name. I think it's I Love Lace. I think that's the name of the pattern. And it's got lots of lovely stretches of garter stitch, which <laughs> which gives me time to cool down in between my lace challenges. So then the next day I took a pie lace workshop with Annie Rowden, who I just love. She is so much fun to be with. And I met her last year for the first time at Tammy's retreat at a wing and a prayer farm that I did last year. And uh, she was a teacher there. And so she was teaching pie lace shawl knitting. And I thought, oh my God, if I can't handle regular lace, what? Um, why am I here? What am I going to do? This is just going to be a nightmare. But I know the secret. <laughs> Can I tell you what the secret is? I don't know. Yes, I think so. When you knit a pie shawl, and if you don't know what a pie shawl is, it can be a half circular shawl, but it's a pie shawl because it's a circular shawl that to wear it, you would fold it in half and wrap it around you kind of thing. So really... It's a formula, and so long as you stick to the formula, your shawl will grow and stay flat and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And what I really like about it is that all your increases are done on just an increase row. So it could be just knit one yarn over, knit one yarn over the whole way around. And then your lace work is always done within the same number of stitches. You're not increasing anywhere. That made a huge difference for me and my enjoyment. And I also started this with Rauma Strickgarn, which is silly because, you know, really these traditionally are knitted with lace weight or a fingering, maybe sport weight, really nice, delicate yarn to show off the lace work. But I had so enjoyed knitting Melody Shawl with this yarn that I wanted to keep knitting. So I took another ball and knitted the start of my pie shawl. And I actually really enjoyed knitting it. This was a shawl I could actually really, really enjoy knitting. And I just kept knitting on it. Um, at first it looked like, I'm not going to tell you. Can I tell you? It looked like a giant nipple. <laughs> Sorry, not trying to be offensive, but it did because we started off the knitting uh, just in stockinette. And of course, it's got that central place that you start. And then I started to add the lace as we got further out. And I knitted on that a lot at Squam. I really enjoyed it. And um, I'm trying to decide whether to keep going in that yarn, which is not traditional, a little crazy. It's going to end up gigantic. Maybe I'll be making a bed throw. I don't know. Or whether to start over with, you know, the correct yarn. Annie said, go, go for it with what I'm knitting. And Part of me feels like, yeah, why not? Anyway, really enjoyed that. She's a great teacher, had a lot of fun. We had a really good conversation in the whole class. We were sitting on a on a deck outside with a lovely breeze off the lake blowing just gently. And uh, we could hear wind chimes and ducks and loons and birds and um, very sweet memories for all of us. It was a great time. Okay, so those are on the needles and I still have my Balvraid hap, which did get a little push to the side over the course of the last couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm still knitting the triangular stockinette section, which is back and forth garter stitch with a loop on each side that I will be picking up to do the border. And I'm knitting this with 
Berlin Yarns P.D. Brown, which I just love. This is her four ply weight, which is fingering, and I'm really loving it. I went up a needle size because uh, it was too dense before, and now I've got the right fabric, I feel, with the bigger needle. And the Balvraid Hap is a free pattern from Blacker, so go check it out. It's a lovely hap, and I'm going to do mine all in P.D. Brown. There's not going to be any colour work. And I think that is going to be a lovely big shawl. I'm knitting the bigger size. It offers two sizes. It's going to be a lovely big shawl that I can wrap up in, in all that Hebridean goodness. And I think that is... One of the things that I think all of us feel about these yarns with stories is that they are filled with memories because you're knitting every stitch um, somewhere special or during a time that's special or a time that's difficult or you've been to where that yarn came from, you've been traveling to the UK and you know exactly where that yarn came from. And I think that's something that New Hampshire Knits listeners and definitely shoppers at the Woolly Thistle really connect with is that you know, their yarn matters to them and it certainly matters to me. And that's why I want this big hap knitted in Berlin yarns, because for me, it's like wrapping a piece of home around me in a very comforting way. But also, you know, having been to Burnery and met with a lovely Meg from the craft there on Burnery and all her lovely Hebridean sheep, you know, that's really meaningful. And I know that that you get that and that, yeah, the knitting is just, it just is so much more than knitting. Oh my goodness. Is anybody watching A Handmaid Tale on Hulu? I'm totally addicted. I've watched it from the beginning and I tune in every Wednesday to get the latest depressing, horrifying episode. (laughs) And it's bad. But one of the worst things about it is that knitting is being maligned and uh, being put out there as something that only women who uh, who buy into this awful place of Gilead would do. Not happy about that. Are you watching? Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm not happy about that because I see knitting as an extremely positive thing in my life. It's brought me so much, but also just, you know, knitting... It's meditative. It's that one stitch from one needle to the next, to the next, to the next, and creating something out of sticks and string. We all know that. It's amazing. So I cannot stand it when knitting is put down as something only oppressed women would do because they're not allowed to do anything else. Or, you know, little old ladies, you know, that image of knitting. Although I love little old ladies and I will be a little old lady knitting. So I'm okay with that. Anyway, off I go on a ramble, on a bit of a rant. Okay, and so that's what's on the needles right now that's getting any sort of action. And I today will be starting to swatch for my next project, which is a summer sweater called Calyx. I believe that's the pronunciation. And Calyx, the word, describes that sort of green outer layer that protects the bud of a flower. So it's the whorl. It's not quite leaves, but it's that greenish thing that goes around a new bud and protects it. So Calyx is a sweater designed by Elizabeth Doherty. And I saw this sweater while at Squam. I was in the dining room and I saw a lovely woman walking by wearing it. And I thought, ooh, what's that? But I couldn't quite get to her before she left the dining room. So I never found out. And then the next day I saw a different woman wearing a Calyx sweater. I didn't know it was a Calyx at the time. And I made a point of getting through that dining room to ask her what it was and she was very nice her name was Jane and she told me it's the Calyx sweater by Elizabeth Doherty which you know I promptly forgot completely forgot any details about it except that I really like it and the next day I think it was a Saturday I was sitting on the dock knitting away with some cabin mates and a canoe or a kayak paddled up uh, to our dock and and pulled over for a lovely chat and then she says oh wait are you Claire and I was like yes another little interlude here (laughs) the name confusion continues I'm so sorry about this my name tag is Squam said Claire so I was Claire again and I tried to tell people well I'm Corrine and they're like huh what Okay, I'm Claire. So I'm Corrine Claire. If you hear either of those names, you know it's me. It's me. So anyway, she's like, are you Claire? And I was like, yes. She says, oh, hi. Um, You like my sweater. And I was like, what's your name? She said, Elizabeth Doherty. (laughs) 
<laughs> so there was the actual designer of this sweater and it was fantastic because when else would that ever happen? So we had a lovely chat. So let me describe this lovely summer sweater. Uh, she knitted it in Shibui linen. So you can knit it in linen and I have plans to knit mine with black or lioness in the four ply weight. And it's got a very nice, simple, elegant lace panel down the middle front of the sweater. The back is stockinette. It's knitted in the round. It's knitted bottom up. And then there's a lovely panel from the neckline over the shoulder, down the arm on each side of lace. And it also looks like it's a dropped sleeve sweater, but also sort of a saddle shoulder because of this lace going continuously from the neck down. So there's some nice interesting construction around the shoulder area that I'm looking forward to. And it's got a lovely wide neck. So it's got drape, it's cool, and it's got this nice airy lace about it. And I have to say that when I saw it being worn those two different times, it looked fantastic. It really looked good. And so I met the designer, as you do, you know, and it was just all meant to be. So I am going to knit this and that is going to be my next cast on. But I'm going to swatch for it first because there's swatching instructions for both the stockinette and the lace, which I really appreciate. I've knit a couple, as I mentioned, a couple of different sweaters that they have you swatch in stockinette and then the whole sweater is in lace. So you have no idea. What? I don't understand that. If you're gonna have lace or cables in a sweater, why wouldn't you do a swatch with those stitches in there to make sure you're getting the right gauge? Um, they don't even give you the gauge for the lace. I don't understand that. So anyway, this does. So I know that I'll be right on par with that. I'm also taking my time to swatch because I would really love it if some of you joined in with me and knit this with me. It's the perfect summer knit. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can do a very nice informal knit along. If you're interested, I'm going to do this through Instagram. So just uh, send me a direct message on Instagram or look for the post showing the sweater and leave a comment. I usually am able to catch them before they disappear or tag me in one of those posts or, you know, in some way, let me know you want to knit along with me and we'll do that. But yeah, so I'm going to cast this on maybe in a week or two, uh, give you time to get your ducks in a row. So do let me know if you're interested in doing this. Yeah, that would be good. So uh that is what's going on in the needles next. I'm still working on my silver forest sweater and I've got a couple or three shawls on the go. No socks. I am just not into socks at the moment. I don't know why. They're just not floating my boat. So that's fine. I'm going to give them a rest. Although I would love to have more knitted socks. I really would. I love my hand knitted socks, but I'm just not wanting to knit them right now because I want to knit every single sweater I put my eyes on. Talking of which, fantasy knitting. Marie Wallen has a new book coming out called Bloomsbury and it is written for Rowan felted tweed DK white yarn. This is something I stock in the shop already and when I saw the book or the images of the new sweaters that she's designed for this I was gobsmacked. I think there's eight maybe more sweaters in the book and I know of at least four that I want to get cast on as soon as that book comes available and I'm going to be a mess. So I'm going to have to try and figure out which one I want to knit first and I think I do know. I think I want to knit the one that has cables and lace. Mm -hmm. Can't remember what it's called. And then the one I want to knit right after that is a uh, colorwork cardigan. It's so cute. And then I want to do the ribbed cable one after that. So yeah, I've got it all worked out, but I will still be a hot mess. I have a good supply of felted tweed in the shop, but I've also just put in an order to get even more because I know you're going to want to knit these as well. And I'll have all the correct colors in so that if you want to knit the same shade as what's in the book, etc., cetera, um, I should have enough stock for that. So keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, that's coming soon. 
Yeah, so that's going to be fun. And also from Marie Wallen, after Bloomsbury, she's going to be releasing another book very much in the same shape and size as her book Shetland. It's going to have the same sort of format and feel. This book will be called Wild Wood and it'll feature her very own yarns that she has created and will be releasing soon. Um, her new yarn is aptly called British Breeds. So I'm super excited for that. I'm a big Marie Wallen fan and uh, I love her designs and I'm sure I'm going to love her wool. So keep your eyes peeled for both those books coming and her new yarn and I will keep you updated with that progress. Okay, so that's all the knitting and all the chin wagon and free thinking that I've got for you for now. Let's do a Wooly Thistle update. As always, thank you so much for your orders and for telling your friends and for posting your Wooly Thistle purchases on Instagram. All of that helps people find the shop and all of that means that I can put any money I make from these sales back into the shop and buy more yarn. That's my mantra, buy more yarn. And I will have more yarn coming and I have lots of irons in the fire for you guys. But thank you really for helping make this little shop uh, a success. And now we're in the growing phase. I want to grow the shop so that I can offer more and more. But to do that, I do need to get the word out there that, that it even exists. So your help, along with your orders, your help in getting the word out is really, really uh, helpful and beneficial. So thank you. I vended at Squam Art Fair last weekend and that was crazy. Have you ever gone to it if you're in the area? It's at Squam Lake in New Hampshire. And I went in the fall last year and I remember thinking it was a bit of a zoo, but a very nice zoo. It was lovely, <laughs> full of beautiful things. And so I was able to vend there this spring and I had a great spot. I was parked next to Cal Patch, the Cal Patch. She was my neighbor. How lovely is that? Yeah. So, and she was busy. Oh my goodness. Her dresses just flew off the racks. Yeah. So that was both exciting and scary. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you know, these people are really, these people are there. And anyway, so I set up my stall. My lovely husband, Jay, helped me. And uh, we brought entirely too much stuff and not enough. You know, if, if that's possible, that's what we did. We had too much stuff with us, but then we didn't have enough. So the event opened at 7.30 and went till 10. I would say the first hour and a half was an absolute crush. Uh, John and I could not keep up quick enough. It was absolutely wonderful. It was great to see so many of you. Um, Gail, hello. I particularly remember meeting you. I remember the lady wearing title yarns. Oh, and I have to say, someone left a lovely book about chickens. And I don't know who left that. I just saw it on the windowsill and my husband said, yes, somebody dropped it off for you. Can you please let yourself be known to me? Because I would love to say thank you to you personally and properly, because that was very thoughtful. Yeah, so I've met many of you. It was really fun. A lot of you... Um, were really interested in the Berlin yarns, the Uist yarn, the John Arben yarn, of course, the Jameson and Smith. But there's just so many colors in these different yarns that I could not bring all of it. So a lot of what I had was for show. And then uh, you could perhaps, if you still wanted to, place your order online. I learned a lot from this first vending experience and I hope that I will be able to tighten up the back end as it were for next time and I also have a better clue of what to bring as well but it was a fantastic fair it went really well I'll be there again in the fall uh, so I'm looking forward to that so yes things are definitely a little quieter now that the summer weather has hit but don't forget Lioness by Blacker is a 50-50 wool linen blend uh, so it has that beautiful drape and cool factor um, and that's what I'll be knitting my calyx with. I have that in four ply and DK and I have quite a few colors so if you are in the market for linen look at that. The Samai is all but sold out. I only have a couple of colors left, but that is a beautiful yarn to be knitting with in warmer weathers too. But as you know, knitters will knit with wool no matter the weather. 
And of course, I have lots of that. I just got a Plotolopi restock in. That's doing surprisingly well, given that it is warm and it is a really woolly wool. Uh, so yes, there's lots of that there if you're interested. And I actually got a new kind of mustardy yellow color. You'll see it in the shop. So that's a new shade added to the offerings. I have lots of Letlopi in stock and... I'm really sort of low on blacker, as you probably have realized if you've been to the shop. There is a fair amount of Swan 4-ply in a limited offering of colors. All of them are beautiful, though. And there is a bit of DK Swan left. There's quite a bit of the classic yarns in stock. And... I have six skeins of St. Kilda left. If anybody wants that, that is a beautiful yarn and a very rare and special yarn. I got more Jacob in stock too. So that's four ply and DK. That's a very soft single breed yarn that's very special. So I'm glad to have that back in stock. But I do know that more is coming. They are milling like crazy there at um, Blacker. And as soon as... They give me the green light to place orders for things like Samite and Tamar. Can't wait to have Tamar back. That's one of my favorite yarns they make, amongst other things. Then I will be getting those back in the shop. We have plentiful supply of Tuku right now. Tuku sock has been selling really well since the Lotta dress showed up in Len 5 or Lina 5. And I have plenty right now of the 03 Aura colorway in the sock, which is what that pattern called for. But I have lots of dress quantities in various shades. So check that out if you're interested in knitting that dress. Lots of fingering too. Of course, John Arban, Knit by Numbers and DK, had some lovely orders for that lately. This yarn is so gorgeous. It's non-superwash organic merino, worsted spun in every color you could ever want. It's difficult to pick colors when you have all the colors, right? That's why I got all the colors, because I didn't want the responsibility of picking which colors you'd like. So I passed that on to you. And I think it is a little bit paralyzing to try and decide. But here's a couple of things to think about. Because he has over 18 colors in six different shades, I know that some people will take every other shade out of that one color and use that as a gradient. Or you could take all six colors and have a very soft gradient from light to dark or dark to light. Or you could take every other color out of there. Or you could choose, uh, you know, the colors you like and then choose, all right, I'm going to take all the second lightest colors or shades out of these different colors. So I'm going to pick six colors that I like and I'm going to go with the second lightest or the third lightest or the darkest, whatever you decide, and take one from each of the colors. Does that make sense? So there are some strategies to work with this so that you're not just sort of throwing a dart. <laughs> Um, if you have any questions or need help with choosing your shades, I am more than happy to help you with that. I can take photos, I can take videos, which I frequently do, and have a nice wee chat with you while I'm doing it. They have to be fairly short, though, because, uh, you know, they've got to be transmitted across the, the interwebs to you. But anyway, I try not to digress like this on there. I keep to business and show you the colors you want to see. So yeah, and Rauma is in great supply. I don't have a lot of colors in Strickgarn, but given my new love and appreciation for that, I will be getting more of that. And I think, and I hope you will join me in that. Jameson and Smith, loads and loads of uh, colors as always there in plentiful supply. Books and magazines with summer comes summer reading. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, we've got West Highland Way back in stock with Kate Davies, her brand new memoir type book called Handy Woman. I'm waiting to hear the final OK that they are coming, um, but they are coming. So um, I will have them in the shop as soon as I'm able. And I can't wait to get my hands on that book. I actually saw Kate talk about the book when I was at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and it was very enjoyable and enlightening and quite interesting too. So that book is going to sell well, I'm quite sure. By Hand 6 in the Blue Ridge Mountains is such a lovely publication. Um, all of her issues are just lovely. They always have knitting, but they always have sort of, you know, about the area that they're focused on and some other crafts. 
really nice book really really nice book and of course uh, Amarisu is just out with their summer issue and this Amarisu has a whole new look it's a bigger magazine is really beautiful quality paper photography is lovely and some really stunning projects in there too for the summer a uh, vintage Shetland project is really great. Many of you are starting to buy your Fenella yarn or Jameson and Smith to knit up projects from vintage Shetland project. I should mention too that Exalana is in the queue to be photographed and put in the shop and that will be going in very soon. The vintage Shetland project is in its second run which is very exciting and after it's completed being printed then we have to ship it over here which does take quite a while. But as soon as I get the green light on that, that it's coming over, I will start to take pre-orders for that. I am distributing it as well to local yarn stores. So if you would prefer to buy it from your local yarn shop, let me know who they are so I can get in touch with them and offer them the books uh, so that they can sell it in their shop. I have a couple of kits in stock right now. The Piri Fleur's uh, hat, which is a lovely colorful hat designed by Kate Davies. It's a very well-known pattern. I have kits for that, which include these beautiful, lovely flowery stitch markers and a woolly thistle tote bag. And also I have the Burra Cowl by Marie Wallen. Um, the Burra Cowl is a pattern in her Shetland book, which many of you already have. And I was putting together Burra Cowls out of Jameson Smith using um, a best match color. But I pushed the boat out and I ordered some Jamesons and so just enough for the Burra Cowl. So I do have some kits left of Jamesons Spindrift in the colours called for in the pattern. So if you'd like that, you get that with a large woolly thistle tote bag. And it's actually the colourful tote bag. I'm giving those away in kits right now and it's got green and purple on the woolly thistle. So. If you're interested in knitting a burra cowl from the kit, don't hesitate. I would order that sooner than later before they're gone. And then uh, lastly, I have more jammy dodger little kid kits coming. This is Erica Knight's cotton and um, her lovely little kitty winkle kits. And the one jammy and dodger is a little shirt and pants. That's done really well as a kit. So I'm waiting for more of that stock to come back as well as her blue face Lester. I've got more of that coming. Oh my God, that stuff is gorgeous. I love that stuff. Oh, and also I introduced a new product, which are these five inch little dishes that are handmade and hand painted in Scotland by Highland Stoneware, which you can actually go visit when you're over there. They have two places, one in Allapool and one in Loch Inver. So up there in the West uh, Highland Coast. Anyway, I got little sheepy dishes. I got ones with a thistle and a big bumblebee and the other dish has a beautiful landscape of just what it's like around there where these dishes are made. I use mine. I got mine from my sister a couple of years ago for my birthday and I, th I use it for stitch markers, you know, at my little knitting area. And I thought, well, you know, I bet you if I like this so much, other people would. And that is usually the driving force for anything that's in this shop. If I like it, I think that you guys will like it too. And yes, you do. I still have a few more in stock. So, and I, I think I'm going to make that a permanent article in the shop because they're useful, they're very pretty, and they're handmade, and they're not too expensive for what you're getting. So check that out. Project bags are coming back. I have a wonderful project bag maker um, who is wild and woodsy and she has her own shop on Etsy and she is in New Hampshire and agreed to make project bags. I actually have them. They're just in the queue waiting for their glamour shots and then they'll go in the shop. These, I have two different fabrics. One is sort of a lovely blue and green tartan and the other is a red and black check which is very woodsy and summery and uh, perfect for carrying a smaller project and so those will be going in the shop soon and that's from wild and woodsy you can find her on etsy and she was actually vending at squam too so it's nice to meet her in person as well so that's it for the Willy Thistle uh, shop update. Thank you. Thank you so much for your continuing support and shopping with me. 
I love my job and I love meeting you and helping you get the right yarn for your project as well as getting these yarns over here. It's all multifaceted job, but very much uh, fun and fulfilling. Okay, I'm going to have a quick moment of hen here. I'm going to tell you that we're having a bit of trouble. Our rooster, Lewis, has decided that he wants to be all attacky, attacky uh, to any human being going inside the fence. He attacked my son. He wasn't hurt, but it was very scary. Uh, he's also gone after my daughter. And he's gone after me, most likely. I have the scratches and bruises on my legs to prove it. Ugh, not nice. So I think he'll be in inverted commas looking for a new home soon because we can't have him attacking the children. My old dog is so small and old and frail and sometimes Lewis can fly the coop and be absolutely free ranging it, which I don't mind generally, but I feel like he would attack the dog and my old dog would not be able to defend himself. Um, I can barely defend myself. I was screaming at him, no, 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 when he was uh, scratching my leg. And he kind of flies at you with his feet first and he's, he scratches you with his claws. So it's very unpleasant. And of course he can't, we can't have him attacking the kids or, or anybody. And actually, you know, the, the chickens are primarily the kids uh, chore. Like they make sure they have food and water, they collect the eggs, they help clean out the coop. So to have to keep them away from that is not the point. So yes, um, hopefully we'll be bidding Lewis a fond farewell sooner than later. It's too bad. It's too bad. But in other chicken news, uh, the baby chickens continue to grow and I would think will be mixed in with the big girls in the next three to four weeks. They're not big enough yet. They would probably get pecked to death, <laughs> but they're getting bigger and that will happen soon enough. But what we did was this lovely New Englander of a coop that Jay built. We've now turned into a duplex, an up and a down. So the older ladies live upstairs and they have a long ramp to get upstairs in and out. And their water's outside, their food is in the coop upstairs and that's where they go to bed and sleep at night. Downstairs is an open area that is all caged in with chicken wire. And that's where the ladies used to come down and get their food and water. So we closed that off, keeping the door shut between the two areas. And we boxed in, I say we, my husband boxed in a little night area for the baby girls and a little roost in there. So they go in there to roost and uh, sleep at night out of the, out of any wind or any, or rain or anything. But then during the daytime, they can come out and they have plenty of space they're getting to see the whole world around them, whereas up until that point that they went out, which is a couple of weeks ago now, they had been in the garage. They only knew what the inside of our garage looked like. So they're out in the big wide world now, but they're safe and um, and they're getting used to seeing these other chickens, as are the older chickens getting used to seeing that there's new girls in town. And I think eventually what we'll end up doing is just opening the door between them and maybe at night we'll put the little girls up with the big girls in the night coop as everybody's starting to doze off. That works quite well usually because nobody's got any energy to fight. And when they wake up in the morning, they don't know any different. They're just all together. <laughs> So yeah, that is the moment of hand, the coop cast for this week. And I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to New Hampshire Knits. You can find the Ravelry group at NH Knits. You can find me on Ravelry as NHK Claire, on Instagram, NH underscore Knits, and you can email me at nhknits001 at gmail.com. And you can find the Woolly Thistle all over the internet at the Woolly Thistle with two L's in Woolly.